Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 167 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Hey, a couple of quick housekeeping bits and pieces here. Uh, those of you who are out there and listening and uh, enjoying the content that you hear on Camera Position, I'd really appreciate it if you went to the iTunes store and dropped a good comment into the comments section and rated the podcast. That helps other people find the podcast, and I'd really appreciate you doing that because uh, uh, that way we got more people in our little uh, Camera Position community. Another bit that I will uh, just mention really quickly is that there are still a few spots left in a couple of my workshops for Italy for June of 2016, uh, Rome and Puglia, the southern uh, boot of Italy, the southern part of the boot of Italy. So uh, take a look at photographitaly.com for more information on those. So to the meat of today's podcast, I wanted to talk about black and white photography. You know, I, I, I recognize that uh, an awful lot of the people who are listening to camera position may have started the way I did with black and white darkroom photography way back in the day when that was really the kind of way that both fine art and hobbyist photographers practiced the medium of photography. In the days before digital photography, color photography was something that, well, you could do it certainly, but it was certainly something that uh, uh, didn't have the same degree of control, certainly the degree of control that we have with today's digital tools. And it meant that most of the folks doing fine art photography or uh, photography as a serious hobby and perhaps combining those two things learned photography as black and white. And I wanted to mention that again today because I've been um, doing a lot more with black and white photography than I have been in the last couple of years, uh, both in shooting black and white film and processing it in the darkroom as I used to do more often getting back into that experience, and also with taking my digital photographic files and converting them to black and white, working in black and white, and uh, thinking in black and white in the way that the world kind of looks in black and white. Now, the reason I wanted to mention this on this episode of Camera Position was that I really think, and I think those of you who did start in black and white photography the way I did way back uh, when, <laughs> when dinosaurs walked the earth, I think many of us who have had that experience with black and white photography would agree that thinking about the world in black and white really helps you think about composition, tone, value, and shape in much different ways than you do in color. And once you begin thinking about converting color digital photographs to black and white, one of the things that I think you'll discover, if you haven't done much of this before, is you'll discover that there are some really interesting things about how photography changes and the way you look at the world changes if you begin to think about the final photographic product as a black and white image. And I think in some long ago episode of Camera Position, we talked about how many digital cameras, including some of the ones that I use, uh, have the capability of showing the viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder in black and white and recording the image in color. Uh, but I'm wanting you to think about the way in which the world might look when you photograph it approaching the subject matter as black and white. The great John Zarkowski, uh, now sadly uh, gone from uh, this world, but uh, he was the, uh, the former director of the photography department at the Museum of Modern Art, curator there. And he often talked about black and white photography as being a matter of being able to ignore the purple necktie. And of course, what he meant by that was that black and white photography takes away our fascination with whatever this rich and beautiful color might be in the subject and forces us to concentrate on the essential elements of the subject itself. And those elements can turn out to be lots of different things, but they are likely to be shape and form and contrast 
and line and texture and light and value, light or dark. What I'm going to do is put a few black and white photographs that I've been working on uh, here in the camera position blog and also in the PDF that comes along with the app. And I'll drop a few of those as well into the Flickr group uh, for camera position. And let's see if we can load up the Flickr group with uh, some black and white images. See what the world looks like in black and white and uh, begin to explore the idea of learning photography with black and white, learning the way the world works in visual images with black and white photography. Uh, kind of going back to basics in a way and seeing what we can do with monochromatic photography and uh, take a look at value, take a look at shape, take a look at texture and quality of light and see what you can do with black and white photography. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography.